Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo, and I'm here to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you know me personally or you're visiting my channel for the very first time, you may be asking, Sister Tayo, why are you sharing this particular daily devotional why not another one because there are many wonderful christian daily devotionals out there well the reason why i'm sharing this particular daily devotional is because as i prepare to enter into the year 2020 which was last year the spirit of god instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on youtube to be very specific and i was able to start that assignment you know the instruction in the month of june 2020 so I shared the devotional not only in the month of June 2020, I shared also in August, October, and December 2020. And in this year, in 2021, I resumed sharing in the month of March in May. I'm not sharing in July, and I'm also going to be sharing for the subsequent months of 2021 by the grace of God. And uh, how did I get to know Pastor Adeboye? He led me to Christ in October 1997, when, many years ago when I was on undergraduate in the University of Lagos in Nigeria. And Pastor Adeboe's style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures to read. He'll give you a memory verse. And when you combine those two pieces of scripture, it helps you to understand the body of the text and what the Spirit of God is trying to say to us as individuals, to the body of Christ and to the world in general. Amen. Now, i said this so many times that, you know, a daily devotional does not replace your word, word of God. It's good for you as a Christian, as an individual, to study the word of God. The Bible says we must, Jesus Christ, you know, you know Paul said in Second Timothy that we must study to show ourselves approved unto God. And then the Bible also talks about looking into the perfect law of liberty, you know. Now, having said that, a daily devotional is excellent because it, it motivates you. It helps you to understand the word of God better, one. And it uh, stirs up your appetite and your hunger for the word of God because of the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Now, uh, today is Friday, July the 9th, and we love Friday. Thank God it's Friday. And the title of the daily devotional is a timely offering? Question mark. Is the question a timely offering? Yes, it is a timely offering. A timely offering. And our scriptural reading is taken from the book of Genesis 27 verses 20 to 33. Genesis 27 verses 20 to 23 to 33. That's 13 verses. Now we know that Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Normally I would read from the traditional King James, but today I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version so that you can understand, you know, uh, the verses very well. And then I'll explain as we go through the text. Amen. So Genesis chapter 27 verses 20 to 33. And thus goes the reading of God's word. Hmm. But Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. And Isaac said to Jacob, please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's game so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and he kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said, surely... The smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and, let, and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. Now it happened that as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had scarcely gone from the present, gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that your soul may bless me. And Isaac, his father, Isaac, and his father Isaac said unto him, Who are you? So he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. 
Then Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he who wanted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came and I've blessed him. And indeed, he shall be blessed. <laughs> May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Um, I'm just going to give a quick background. So Isaac is the son of Abraham, our father, the patriarch. And Isaac had two sons, a set of twins, Esau and Jacob. And they were so they were so different because Esau was a very hairy man, and today we say he's part of the beard gang. You know, he was a very hairy man. He was macho. He was a hunter. You know, he did a lot of manly things. And Jacob, on the other hand, was a smooth guy, no beard. He was a mommy's boy. He was always with mommy, following mommy everywhere, taking care of the sheep, cooking with mommy. He could cook, you know. And the house was so divided, was fragmented, was dysfunctional because Isaac loved Esau. He loved the manliness of Esau and Rebekah, his wife, loved Jacob. So, you know, they were the form was very funny. And um, Isaac wanted to bless Esau. Now, we know at a point in time previously that um, Esau is firstborn, so he had the right of the firstborn. And Jacob came out second, you know, but we know that at a point in time, Esau sold his birthright. You know, and we said that, you know, Jacob, Isaac, I'm sorry. Jacob stole Esau's birthright, but really that's not correct because actually the Bible tells us that Esau despised his birthright and sold his birthright to Jacob for a pot of a pot of a pot of porridge, you know. So actually, Jacob wasn't stealing the birthright. The birthright had become his because Esau despised his birthright. So when Isaac told Esau that he wanted to bless him, Esau should have told his father, "You shouldn't bless me. I'm no longer the firstborn. I've actually sold my birthright." But he wanted to play a fast one. And to eat his cake and have it you know so when we say Jacob stole the birthright he didn't steal the birthright it was now given to him but anyway pastor is saying today a timely offering so Isaac said to his son Esau go and kill you know go and hunt you know get me when you catch the animal kill it make food for me so I can bless you when I've eaten I will bless you and Rebecca his wife heard and said to Jacob her own son her favorite son you go and get one of the kids one of the little goats and cook it and make savory meat you know food for your father so that he can bless you instead of Esau. And Jacob said, You know, I'm a, I'm a smooth man. Esau is hairy. He said, Don't worry. She took some of his clothes and put it on and took some of the dried skin of goats and put it on his neck, you know, and around his, you know, so that when because Isaac was blind, so when he feels him, he will only feel, you know, and uh, Jacob was afraid. He said, What about if my father finds out is me? And, and, and instead of Esau and, he, and instead of blessing me, he curses me. And the mother said, "The cost will be of me. You do." And she cooked the food quickly, quickly, quickly. Is what Pastor is focusing on a timely offering, and brought it to Isaac and sent Jacob to bring it to Isaac. Isaac suspected that you know something was going on, but he couldn't see. He was blind, and so he blessed Jacob, thinking he was blessing Esau because they were quick to put that offering together. Meanwhile. Esau was still running after the deer and the antelope and the in the bush before he cooked it himself, you know. So by the time he came, it was already too late. The, Jacob, Isaac had already blessed Jacob. So Pastor is saying a timely offering. Amen. And the memory verse is taken from Genesis 27 verse 20. And, and Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Pastor says in the first paragraph, when Isaac asked Esau to prepare a delicious meal of venison, which is deer or antelope meat, for him to eat so he could pray for him, Rebecca took advantage of the short distance between Jacob's tent and his flock, ensuring that the dish was prepared and blessing stolen before Esau returned. And the moral is the quick response worked to the advantage of Rebecca and Jacob. So pastor is saying that while, you know, Esau delayed, Rebecca took advantage of, you know, she was quick thinking and she took advantage and made that, that offering very quickly and made the food very quickly. And before Esau came back, the blessing had gone to Jacob. And we heard Isaac say, and I've blessed him and he is indeed blessed. That means that the blessing could not be reversed. Going on, Pastor said, then moves on to another topic. He says, one lesson to learn from the events that happened shortly before Jesus' crucifixion is the gesture of the woman who anointed his feet with oil in Luke 7, 37 to 38. It was timely. Many of us are too slow when it comes to giving offerings to God or doing good to our neighbors. Many times, 
our so-called kind gestures are belated. <clears throat> Pastor says, I shared a need of the church with one of my sons, and instead of promptly meeting it because of its urgency, he said he would go and pray about it. The following week when he came, ready to meet the need, God had already raised somebody else to resolve the issue. He felt bad about it. What a lesson. Some people criticized the woman at Bethany for wasting the ointment instead of selling it to provide for the poor. Jesus rebuked them, saying, She had done what she could. She, she's come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. And that was in Mark 14, 8. By the time this same woman, along with another, and Jesus' mother came to anoint the body of the Lord after his death, it was a belated gesture. Jesus had reason. Thankfully, Mary Magdalene had given her sacrifice before it was too late. So Pastor is giving another example of why it is important to, to move quickly when the Spirit of God gives you an instruction. And we shared this also on May the 28th, okay? And this story is about Mary Magdalene who was prompted by the Holy Spirit to anoint Jesus Christ, to anoint his body onto the bearing. So she went and she bought a very expensive perfume called Spikenard. And that cost her a year's wages. She was moved by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God put something into her heart. And it wasn't only her that God spoke to. God was speaking to other women as well. But Mary Magdalene was the only one who moved quickly. And she went and anointed the head of Jesus. She, poured, she broke that fragrant oil and poured it on the head of Jesus. And anointed his feet. And you know, some people were like, Hey, why did she waste this perfume? On the, why, why did she waste this perfume? This, this, you know, on Jesus, she could have you know, sold it and given it to the poor. You, anything you do for God is not a waste, you know, and that is a, an insult. That is, <laughs> that's blasphemy, you know. But Jesus rebuked them <clears throat> and he said that what this woman has done is that she has anointed my body unto the bearing and that wherever the gospel is preached, her name and what she has done today will be a memorial, you know. And uh, so what Pastor is saying here is that she moved timely. As soon as the Holy Spirit laid that thing in her heart, she went and did it. Now, the other women who God also spoke to, they did move. By the time they went to the tomb to go and anoint the body of Jesus unto bearing, he had risen from the dead. And even Mary followed them also when they were going to anoint the bed, you know, the second time. But thankfully, Pastor says she, Mary Magdalene, had given her sacrifice before it was too late. When God gives you an instruction to do something, move quickly. You know, somebody said delayed obedience is disobedience. And you have to train your spirit to move fast when the Spirit of God is giving you a prompting. You know, if you do not know what to do about the prompting, that's why we pray in the Holy Spirit and you ask the Holy Spirit to help you concerning what is in your spirit so that he will begin to shed light on what you need to do and you need to move fast and swiftly. Amen. Pastor then goes on and says, we must always be ready to do good according to Galatians 6.10. He says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And pastor is praying for us, for all of us. He says, may the Lord grant you, may, may the Lord grant us the grace and the wisdom to offer our gifts at a time acceptable unto him. In the mighty name of Jesus, I say, amen. May our gifts or sacrifice to God never be considered late by him. Amen. May the Lord never have cause to raise somebody else in our stead. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I say, Amen and Amen. And the action point is identify areas of, the need, of need in your church and your neighborhood. Decide to meet as many of such needs as you can before it is too late. So let's move quickly. When the Spirit of God drops something in our heart, do it quickly. DIQ, do it quickly. You know, and ask the Holy Spirit for help to do it quickly amen and when you see people giving never condemn them anything you give to the you know giving is a is an attribute of god god is a giver for god so loved the world that he gave his very best so when people are giving don't like be like mm -hmm, she's the only one in the church she's the only one in the church no bless him and ask thank god for his life okay never condemn anyone who gives who con whom god has laid something in their hearts to give Amen. And may God continue to make us give us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
thank you for today's reading. I pray, Almighty God, that you give us the grace to move swiftly when you give us instructions by the power of your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, the Bible says that the children of Reuben, there was great searchings of heart. Father Lord, we are not like them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we do not dis we do not contemplate your instructions whether we should do it or whether we should not. Father Lord, we are not of them that have great searchings of heart. We move swiftly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the grace of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the enabling of the Holy Spirit to act on the instructions and the promptings of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We receive grace to release that seed that you have asked us to release. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this was not too long. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Temitaya. May God bless you exceedingly.